this podcast is for entrepreneurs who want to discover the key thinking tools of high achievers. You are now part of a small group of people who are trying to learn the ins and outs of these tools called mind models without the fluff. This podcast will give you an inside look at the daily life of a mind model coach and what he's done for the past 30 years to transform his clients so they can get six and seven figure results. Welcome Welcome to to Mind Mind Model Model Mastery Mastery Secrets. Secrets. Now here's your host, Blair Dunkley. Welcome everybody. This is Blair Dunkley with MindModelMasterySecrets.com. This is where you're going to be finding out about mind models that can transform your life and hearing from individuals who have already taken some of the mind models and hopefully they've transformed their lives. Today with us, we've got Kate McShay. Hi, Kate, and welcome. Hey, Blair, how are you? How are you I'm, doing? I'm doing great, great, great. And you? Good. I'm doing fabulous. Uh, just super excited to be here and honored to be here. Well. Great to have you on board. So uh, I hear you've taken some of the mind models and put them to work in Chicago, and you're from Seattle. Yes. So you're traveling yep. around doing stuff with them. Okay, so yes. fill me in. Tell me the story. Yeah, so what was really cool is I know that we spent, what was it, three days with you and Melissa um, learning the mind models, and then what I loved was that we had the ability to be able to, it was literally the week right afterwards. I think we all left each other on a Thursday and Mm -hmm. ended up flying out to Chicago to help facilitate a workshop um, for internet marketers and network marketers, people looking to build their businesses online and build their brands online. And, um, and one of my mentors, Tim Irway, had taken your mind models, um, gosh, I think it was what, about four years ago exactly, was when you guys yeah. started working four together. Four or five years ago, yes. Yeah, four or five years ago. So I had known of mind models. However, I had the ability to be able to go deeper into the understanding and then apply it with our students and our clients for three days. It was a three-day workshop. And I know I sent you a picture and I sent our group the picture and just said, it's amazing what's already happening. Yeah, that was day one. It was day one. We had tears, so much, so much more curiosity um, and a lot more questioning in a good way, even from day one. And then Saturday was just unreal. What happened on Saturday normally doesn't happen until Sunday, about right before lunch. And oh, so, wow. for yeah, for me, it was just for all of us to be able to go through what we went through and then immediately apply it um, was just absolutely phenomenal. So it was it was really really powerful. Excellent. Yep. So yeah, what, fill me in. What what was what made it powerful? What was the magic there for you? I think there were a few things for us as as facilitators that created the magic that then allowed our clients to just really have an incredible experience. I think the first thing was that we all now were trained in the question concepts that we had. So we all had a similar understanding. That was the first thing that was really, really huge. The second was that we owned what we were doing and we came in on Friday knowing that that was something that we were going to take on and we were going to run hard with Mm -hmm. and really make sure that we watched for, um, for us as well too. The third was, um, which I thought was really great was watching when we said why and catching us as, as facilitators during our time training, um, when why was coming out and looking at that and then just pointing it out to each other and noticing was it a true why question was it internal or was it more of a you know disguised what Mm -hmm. and so that was huge because that really helped us understand um how we teach and train and when almost the habit of why would come out and more often than not it was coming out out of a place of passion out of a place of um we already knew what we were teaching about Mm -hmm. and it was or it was things in the past that we were bringing to share an experience or a story. And so it was just neat for us to be able to, to share what we saw from like a facilitator sitting in the back to watching a trainer in the front Mm -hmm. and, um, and watching that transition change from Friday to Sunday too. Just very, very, yeah, it was really, it was really cool. One of our other trainers, JT was, uh, talking about, okay, I need to slow down when I speak then. And they need to be more, um, I need to think before I talk. And it was just really, it was really, really cool for us to be able to help each other out that way. So I would say those would be the first beginning parts from the facilitator side of things that I thought was cool. Right. Um, what I loved was our ability to go through, um, the, the problem solving process or the success formula with the who, what, what, how, Yep. was incredibly powerful 
And for me, it was powerful because I realized that I had never fully brought someone all the way through the process, that I would do the who, the what, and then the what, and then the how would be left out for taking action and, exactly. and like where they might be able to post it, when they might get back to me. And just adding in those elements and being aware of it just drastically changed their ability to take action, to get focused. And it happens so much faster. Like it would take me at least a day and a half to get through with most people. And it was taking us just about 30 minutes or so when we really just went right through the model with the students. So it was awesome. Yeah. You know what? That's one of the things that we've done um, here. I want to reiterate and then dive deep into uh, some of the mind models that you've brought up here. But um, you know what? We went in and... We worked with some banks in another company that I I own and run with my partner, Melissa, and it's Results Now, Inc. Um, Results Now um, is known for being able to compress transformational timeframes. And what that is, is normally when you're working with uh, C-level executives in banks and stuff like that, when they're bringing up their high potential imp- individuals, they're looking at five to 10 years of development. Well, sure. with baby boomers leaving the market like at unprecedented rates of retirement, you d- have this huge gap and it's three or four tiers because there were just so many baby boomers and they were at the C-level and then at the senior executive level and then at the executive level and then junior executive, then manager. And when you have highly tiered structures like banks usually are, you have the top four or five tiers all filled up with people in the same age group all more or less boomers that were retiring. And so what do you do? You got to drop down, you know, four or five tiers and bring up individuals very, very quickly. And their problem was, well, there wasn't room to hire them in and to develop them over that few years, like five years, 10 year period. And that they just didn't know what to do. We came up with a solution and part of that is getting, and most of that acquiring the skills, people can get technical skills quickly, like yeah. very fast. But yeah. what they're lacking is, and what the what that transformational process took five years to do, five or more years to do, was basically have people go through enough life experiences so that they could actually learn the people skills. And the people skills was the thing that transformed people's lives. Well, when you name and label the people skills, as you're sort of alluding to in a few things that you did, you can take things that would take days, weeks, or months and compress them to minutes, hours, or a few days, literally, quite often, and, you know, weeks at the most. And then that transforms people, you can bring them up to speed a lot faster. And sorry for the long story, but sort of filling in for our listeners here, they've got to sort of put it into perspective. But you're saying that you took days and took it into like 30 minutes. Yeah, yeah. That's amazing. That's totally amazing. And it's so, and it's, and it really is amazing because what I noticed was so different was because we had the success formula, because I understood the difference between certainty and clarity, there, just so many things I could be more aware of as a, as a facilitator, um, listening to how people were speaking. And I had the ability to be able to address it versus I used to kind of sit on Friday and watch and listen and wait and take notes. And then by Sunday, you know, I felt, I felt like it was time. Right. And on Friday, all, all of us were like, Nope, it's time. And it's time now. And it's time to, you know, address what the problem is. Okay. Let's, let's break down. Cause we didn't actually, I didn't teach you the trainer, Minds uh, like we did. We Melissa and I role modeled the trainer mindset for you, and this is great for trainers out there and people that are transforming lives or people that are coaching other people. Like this stuff is some. Well, maybe I'm blowing my own horn too much, but it's some of the best (laughs) stuff I've ever seen. So I would say you're not. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you, thank you. Um, Yeah, no, I um, I'm I noticed that 
you're compressing, you know, run me through one of those things that you noticed and let me interrupt you if that's okay. Oh, yes, absolutely. Okay, and then what we're going to do is I'm going to pick out for our listeners exactly what the mind model was and how you used it. You'll share that. I'll just sure. break it out so people get it. And then I'm sure. going to break it down so that you can leverage that some more, probably. Unless yep. you've done it like perfectly the first time, which is not impossible. Not <laughs> It's a little rare, but not impossible. I have yep. some brilliant people, and you're not bad overall, <laughs> honestly. Okay, so let's see what happens. Okay, yeah, share. so it was it was a it was a tag team approach um, between facilitators. Cool, you and, and J- so we, JT, JT and Carrie. Actually. Oh, nice, so three of you. It was great. It was really awesome. great. And so it was one with one specific client, and we'll call her Sue. Sure. Um, it wasn't Sue, but we'll keep it for privacy reasons. Sure. And so she was she was starting to have a discussion about her Facebook advertising and how it wasn't working for her and. And that it wasn't going to, she was nervous that when she got home, it wasn't going to be able to produce results right. because she got into, when she started talking about um, her husband and not sure if her husband wanted to be a part of it and that he was disapproving on what she was going to be taking action on. And she was worried that if she didn't get her ads right over the weekend, it was going to become a problem with her husband because right. she wanted him to be a part of the business. Right. And so... We let her talk about that, and then we ask specifically. Okay, I'm gonna. Yep. I'm gonna. Okay, first yeah, of all, let's go for it. you're you're breaking it out here very specifically, which is great. So the first thing that we want to do is do just a standard identification of where the client is and where Sue is, and yep. you did that. Now you yep. also said just let her talk, okay? Yes. And that's important because we want people to vent. And this way, we deplete that emotional baggage rather than keeping it up. And it takes time for people to naturally deplete on their own. But if we give them the space and time to vent it out to one um, unit, I'm going to refer to it as one unit of venting, and we can keep it to that and constrain it more or less to that, we can take huge time off the need for repeated venting of the same material. Uh, one of the things that I do is is I, I think I might have even shared it with you um, there, but briefly, just in a in an aside. So I'm just going to draw something out. When yeah. somebody is, is venting, they'll start off with, and this circle here just represents, or oval, just represents the first block of venting. And so that's like an executive... Um, and I'm just putting exec sum here, executive summary there. So it's like an executive summary. This is how people sort of naturally vent. And so they, they go. Now, they'll pause briefly for that next one, seeing if you understand what it is that they said. If you now did you manage to to get in and make a comment to her at that moment? We did. So we got in to manage to get in and used the wow comment. Like, wow, that must be cuz she said I'm feeling overwhelmed by all of it. And we said, "Wow, I can understand the reason that would be Okay. overwhelming for you. I never quite taught this to you, but you mm-hmm. defaulted into it pretty naturally, which a lot of people do, but they don't know when it's not working what they did that worked. The wow yeah. comment is great, and some people actually say, do wow, do something that acknowledges their feeling or the size of the emotion. Yep. I've tested this out, um, and for my listeners, they'll, they'll start recognizing Life Skills College is where I, I spent um, over 20 years of my life. Uh, well, I ran the colleges as both a Life Skills coach and then vice president, then eventually president. But over the years, we were able to test things out. And the wow comment works. It's okay. Mm-hmm. But the key word that you said was not wow. What do you think that other key word might have been? 
her. No, I that you, you said. That I said. That's I understand. you said. I yeah. understand. When the second that you say I understand, what happens when you don't say I understand? If you just go wow, <laughs> and you just sit back, they'll Pers- go on. And their story tends to double in size. And if it does that again, it will double in size yet again. So Mm -hmm. it'll keep on growing because the person, Sue in this case, is wanting to be understood. The second you say, I understand, boom, they feel understood. Everything changes. Okay, pick up your story if you don't mind. Yeah, and so... So when I said, wow, I understand, it came after she had vented about her ads and then transitioned into it was really yes. about her husband. It was about needing to make sure that her husband was going to be okay with her moving forward with this business and wanting him Absolutely. to be involved. And so then we said, so what have you done in the past with your husband in order to, to what have you done with your husband in the past when it comes to your Perfect. business? And so we let her again just vent and talk about what she did. And what was interesting is she started to go back to, well, I'm a, I was in the army and I had this experience here and I felt like I always needed to take care of myself and I didn't really need anybody else. And then she had a pause and, and uh, it was actually Carrie. Carrie interrupted and said, can I ask Perfect. you a question? And the reason she did that is because she identified that Sue was going back into a state of that 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 why loop or yep. that habit of just uh, explaining her reasons for doing her what reasons she does. why and so she her exactly Perfect. her reasons why she she does what she does so Carrie said can I ask you a question she said sure um, so Carrie said what specifically have you done with your husband in the past when it comes to talking to him about Excellent. your business and so which was great yeah Carrie both Carrie and JT did an amazing job. And she said, well, honestly, what I do is that I do my work in my office and he's out in the living room and he's not doing any work with me and I don't know how to bring it up with him. And so we got down to understand. And so then actually Carrie repeated back to him. So what I heard you say was that you're doing the work in your office while your husband's in the living room. And what would you like your husband to be doing? And she said, well. I would like him to actually be able to do the business with me because he said he's wanted to before and then went back into her why state again. And so then JT actually interrupted and said, well, what, what conversations have you had with your husband? And so what we ended up getting from her was that she actually hasn't asked him what he wanted to do or what part of the business he'd want to be a part of. So then we transitioned into, so what might you do in order to be able to have that conversation with your husband or, and so then, or actually we didn't say to have that conversation with your husband. We said, what might you do about that? And, and she stopped and she said, well, I don't know. And she went back into the, the piece of it. Well, I've never, you know, I, I don't know if he wants to. And so Carrie said, well, what specifically might you do about that? And then she said, well, I could have a conversation with my husband. And and then uh, Carrie said, what specifically might you do, you know, right now that might help you have that conversation? With okay, I, I, you're, you're just setting this up too good. I, I can't <laughs> I can't let any more of this slide by. Okay, Go ahead. <laughs> so so um, you're ju- and we did cover this off there. Do you know pop quiz? So what do you which one of the mind models do you think I'm going to bring up? Well, this one is the success formula, the who, what, what, how. No, this one is no. not the success no, formula. No, it's not. Okay. No, 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 no. It's the three magic words. Oh. It's Okay, it's specifically, yep. or might, specifically, and now, in that now. order. Yes. So might, specifically, and now. And you're just yep. using it over and over and over again. And I, I'm, like, I'm just like, uh, yay. <laughs> um, and it's amazing because... You know what? You guys are are creating that whole thought funnel. So might is the thing that creates this huge possibility. And might has got that absolutely brilliant little uh, subconscious accessing of your brain in the back end. Mm -hmm. It's like tinkering with the, the knobs and nobody even knows that you're really doing it. It's not really manipulation, but it is a very strong influencer. 
because might gives that person permission to do something that's both, you know, powerful and there's lots of possibilities. So it's yeah. powerful possibilities because those are the two primary subconscious meanings of the word might. And so might all, the subconscious mind always filters all of these meanings to jam it into the conscious mind. And then what it does is it picks the words or the, the things at the way of, of filtering out the information that's appropriate. But the interesting thing about might is most of the time, both of those subconscious meanings are appropriate. There's a third mm -hmm. one, and mite is this little insect that eats plants. It's a mite. It's a little mite. Um, but we have mighty mouse, and we have the possibilities of all what might happen. And all of these things are there. And the two powerful ones are powerful possibilities. So when you give that command subconsciously, so what might you do specifically now? Oh my God. You've just walked this person through this thought funnel of what might you do? Oh, I've got all of these powerful possibilities and I can bring it down to something that's specific. Now, most people thought when I was initially testing out this whole thought funnel thing uh, yeah. that specifically brought it down to a single thing. But that's not how most people's minds work. Some people it does, but most people bring it down to two or three things. So you get you know, this flood of possibilities that are powerful possibilities down to these two or three things that are there. And then you use the word now, which means instantaneously. In the now, you can only do one thing at a time. So yeah. you're you're forcing that person into a single funnel flow, a single thought, a single action. And that's what you've done. So anyway, so excellent, excellent job between the three of you. And then, yeah. you know, Perfect. So what happened? So, so what happened? And this was, this was the interesting part is what happened is it almost ended there, but it didn't. So it almost ended there with what, you know, specifically might you do right now? And she said, well, I'll make time to, to talk to my husband. Like, Oh, I'll make time to talk to my husband. Mm -hmm. Um, okay. Well then yeah, consider when you might do that. And so then I was hanging in the back and I said, well, when, when might you, when might that appointment be then for you? And so dug deeper into her identifying and booking the time that she was going to do it with her husband. Perfect. What was neat was that I was watching her body language in the beginning. It was like down and it was just, um, it was down. Her shoulders were curved in. She was talking really low and she went, I'll do it tonight. <laughs> and so it was, it was really neat and it was, I'll do it tonight. When specifically, might you do it tonight with your husband when you have that conversation? She said, well, when I get home. And so then she just started talking. We didn't, we didn't even really have to prompt her anymore because she just said, well, when I get home and if we finish here at seven, it takes me 45 minutes. Like she's going through the whole thing yep. in her head. It takes me 45 minutes. And you know what? I'll probably, I'll do, I'll do it at nine. And I said, okay, cool. So when might you get back to me on how the conversation went? Perfect. Yeah, which was great. And she said, well, tomorrow. And and she almost went back and she went, tomorrow. Like <laughs> there yep. was just that little, and, and I know with you and Melissa, what I loved was when you guys talked about, be, is it moving forward? Is it effective or ineffective? Listening to the language and listening to the tone of their voice. And I said, okay, well, when might you get back to me? And she said, well, tomorrow. And I said, give me a time. When might you get back to me? And she said, well, when I'm at work, I can do it between eight and nine. And I said, all right, where might you get back to me? Because I'm going to be on a flight. And she said, oh my gosh, I can post it in our fast track group, which is Perfect. elite marketing pros, uh, mentorship group on Facebook. And she did, and she did it right at eight 30 and it was amazing. And she said she had a wonderful conversation with her husband and that he sent her a text that day and said, I'm so excited that I'm going to be able to be a part of this with you. I never felt like I, like, like it was something that you wanted me to be a part of and I couldn't be more excited. So it was a, it was really, really neat. And you know, all of us just looked at each other during our break and we were like, yes. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. It was, no, that's it was totally great. awesome. Yeah. Most of this stuff happens in a very predictable manner. You've said 
to me basically recounted the story here. And we're looking at about 60 to 70 percent likelihood of it ending positively in this uh, scenario. It doesn't always, but yeah. it's way better than 50 50. Yeah. Now, the probability of that being up there is because the person is prepared and the mindset of that individual is now positive, but they've got a pre planned model in their brain because you walk them through a thought funnel. So that thought funnel, that mind model of the thought funnel gives them the chance to almost mentally rehearse everything that they're going to do. See themselves going through it, do that mental rehearsal, but they tend to include their partner's model of the universe, their way of thinking, so it's more reasonable. So it doesn't become as dramatic or trying or, you know, challenging as one might think. And especially when they sit back and worry about how things have always gone in the past, they have gone negatively. So she's associating that and she's planting those associations. In fact, those kinds of behaviors with that mental state and mm. all of a sudden, she has a mindset that she's going to make it work. She's going to plow through it. But if she has not structured it using mind models, she's just used mindset. The mindset associates with negative outcomes. Yeah. And the odds are she's going to get another negative outcome. Yep. But when you use the mind model, it's very specific and walks you through that thought funnel. And mm. that's the brilliant part of it. Now, you also associated the success formula mind model with that, yep. the who, what, what, how. And yep. so the who, what, what, how is an incredibly powerful thing. You also mentioned earlier on about why's and you were checking each other out. And mm -hmm. I mean, I'm sorry, but I do get up on my soapbox a little bit here around why's <laughs> and you know, I do. Um, <laughs> yep. And so, I mean, people talk about the need to know why. People love to know why, but that's the number one thing. That one question holds more people stuck and disabled, mentally disabled, to be able to move forward, move through things because they feel like they have to resolve their why first. Now, if you jump on, as I showed you during the, the uh, uh, workshop there, yeah. I mean, I love Simon Sinek's stuff. Brilliant. He's a brilliant man. Anthony Robbins, equally, mostly excellent stuff. But their why thing, I mean, oh my God, all put, you know, somewhere in the in a link here or at the bottom of the screen or somewhere around here, the link to go watch Simon Sinek. Because Simon Sinek's um, why, golden, golden circle um, piece, where why is at the center of, the, of his universe, and you'll literally be able to count, as I showed you, yeah. Simon Sinek literally giving the why, and people don't understand why, and then go through six what's to redefine his why. Yeah. I mean, oh my God, like it's just so ridiculous because <laughs> he's saying why once, you people need to understand their why, but what they need to do to understand their why is understand all these what's that go along with it. And all of those what's could have been focused into a single what and go, yeah. what is your purpose? I yep. mean, it's like, hello, you're a smart guy, but you're using why to that now is technically you're needing people to come over to why and park their why and go through all of these six what's in order to figure out their why. Well, is their why actually a why or is it actually a what? And my yeah. argument is he's actually wanting to figure out what's but a deeper level what. And he doesn't know the difference. I've done the research. I did the research on question concepts. I spent six and a half years of my life figuring this stuff out. Most people in the world don't understand it. But when you do, I mean, you saw the consequence yourself. Oh my gosh. It was just, it's, it's so powerful and it's powerful to be able to, to, for us as facilitators to, to see that in people and see and identify when they're in a why state and how to help them get out of that why state. And by using questioning, <laughs> it was, you know, it was really cool. Blair was when right. we were able to use questions through those three days, 
our clients started picking up on it. And so our reviews, because we do marketing reviews, and so we're looking at advertisements, we're looking at a bunch of different things, and we teach content in between. And so what we were able to do this time, which was just absolutely powerful, is because we were asking our questions differently, our clients started picking up on it, and they started paying more attention to the content we were sharing. And then when it came time to review, They said, well, what I noticed you did when you trained on your ad, you did this. So what I have to do is I need to state the pain better in my ad. So it was almost like they were answering their own review themselves. And we had a couple people who said, I'm going to show you what I have, but I'm going to tell you the three things that I think I should do, like I know I should do different um, already. So we had... So that's new for you? It's new because... What we noticed is, you know, when when you talk about your ask versus tell. Yes. And what I think we identified big time during our workshop is that during review times, we did a lot more telling than asking. Yes. And so our our students and our clients, and I know that I've done this before at other workshops too, are just ready for us to tell them, here's what's wrong, add in the pain, add in the benefit, this is your call to action. You might want to try this one. You might want to change your image. And instead, when we ask the questions on, you know, knowing what you know now with what we went through through this workshop, yeah, it, right? Totally. It was, I mean, it yes. Was great. And it was knowing what you know now with the content that we went through with, um, with you know, showing Carrie's example for her ad- advertisement. What might you do differently in your ad? And it was just like boom, boom, boom. And it, it allowed our students to be resourceful. And I just loved it because. I, I totally saw it. I saw the difference between an identifying in us that we were telling so much more than asking. And it was an amazing transition um, because on Friday, they, they were still just, j- just tell me what to do. Just tell me what to do. And then by Saturday, you know, we had one student just that just said, I don't even think I need you to see my ad. I need to create a new ad so <laughs> that you can review that one, which was awesome. Um, so that for me, just the power of, of asking questions versus telling people what to do, we saw it immediately in a three-day time period See, on people just getting super resourceful. Absolutely. Yeah. And and that's the whole point of yeah. mind models. Mind models are always about creating resourceful states. So everything that we do with mind models, yes. it's not about solving a problem. It sure as heck isn't about telling people what to do. It's about sharing and creating resourceful states. Now, yeah. the funny thing about this, what you just did is, yeah, ask versus tell is another mind model. That's yeah. that's our one of our fundamental ones, like top two yeah. that we start off with every single time. And, you know, asking versus telling, it's so powerful, but people don't get the power of it until you experience the power yeah. of actually asking those questions and when you start asking questions and those questions are are questions that cause people to go after curiosity and the state that causes change to occur change is powerful but if you do it from a why based state you're going to be asking questions around why and why focuses on the past and gets people stuck in their past and unfortunately we can't change the past but if we go to present tense questioning skill sets, which I teach in Question Concepts, another one of our fundamental mind models, one of the big ones, is that transforms people into becoming resourceful. And you personally, the three of you, looks like you yeah. guys all experience the power of, oh, yeah. oh my God, when you start asking questions, look at how fast you can move people. And Tim was like celebrating in the back because <laughs> Tim was there and he did, he trained as well and he hopped in um, as well. But he just said it was amazing for him because obviously being CEO of the company, he, he just said the power of what we went through in, and he said like, you don't need me anymore. And it's not because we don't need him, but it's because what we've learned, we now, we now all have a common understanding and we all utilize it of, of utilizing these mind models. And I think that's such a huge thing for him. Like you could just see him in the back and he was just smiling in the back and watching it all. It was just like, it was almost like fireworks where it was just firing off and then watching the transition where, you know, on Saturday night, um, like I was saying is that typically we have 
somebody big breakthrough on Sunday morning right. and just become like super resourceful and it and it shifts the room right yep. it's just amazing how it shifts the room well that happened on Saturday night and it was just a massive amount of tears in a good way where people just uh, one person identified it and it actually became an action plan for everyone that night to start working on was who am I now versus mm -hmm. who have I been who have I been in the past because a lot of that was coming up and and one person just just through us asking a lot of questions mm -hmm. um, just went, well, this is who I am now. And I am a strong and powerful woman and I'm confident. And she like stood up and it just became that moment where it, it literally was like a wave. Like it shifted the room. It was a great way to exit on Saturday and bring us back in on Sunday, which Perfect. was just super, super powerful. Okay. Yeah. So, um, now this is getting to be a little bit more advanced. Didn't cover any of this. So what actually happened? I know you just gave me the story of it. Let's sure. break it down into skill sets and behaviors because she's sure. doing some stuff there that you have to identify as a, uh, facilitator and mm -hmm. whether or not you're a facilitator a CEO running your own company or doing this on your own and you're just doing a startup business this kind of shift we're going to explore right here right now happens to us all all the time and if we don't know how to name and label these different sections another mind model naming and labeling yeah. again <laughs> if we don't know how to name and label these things we don't notice it and we have a wonderful experience that's a one and done and we mm. don't know how to duplicate and we don't break out those things that are literally transformational see yeah. you're talking about quite literally a transformational change are you not yeah okay. oh yeah absolutely so now i've given given the first little bit away but we're going to start breaking down how to construct transformational changes using mind models okay yeah. okay yeah. so back to your story what did you notice and you may not have noticed at all that's fine because i sure as heck has, haven't taught you any of this stuff this is yeah. okay so uh we only taught you really jesus six maybe seven yeah i was i was looking back i think it might have just been six i think it was six yeah I had a plan for doing eight, but the six that we did cover are pretty powerful considering oh, yeah. like there are slight, like there's over a hundred of these mind models that no. when you, yeah. And that's how come people hire, you know, results now and take the courses through rewiring the mind, you know, to get all yeah. like in rewiring the mind, that course has got 63 mind yeah. models in it, like 63. <laughs> <laughs> that's the majority of them. Okay. Um, anyway, let's get back to you. So yes. with you, um, you personally have that whole piece in there. So what did you notice about that piece, of, that transformation piece? So what I noticed about the, looking back on, on what happened, what I noticed about the transformation piece is the transformation happened for this client while someone else was um, getting asked questions. Right. So while someone else was was getting asked questions who was in a stuck state mm -hmm. and and the stuck state was due to well i've always behaved this way and i've always responded this way okay, and first I, of all hold it right there that yep. other person was in that stuck state great yep which question concept which question concept was, of were being they, in the stuck state yeah being in that stuck state which question concept with were, were they in they were in, oh, they were in Y. Correct. It's past yeah, oriented yeah. and yeah. they were probably mo uh, moderately to significantly emotional around that. Oh, yes. 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 A lot of frustration um, and we're in that stuck state. And I know Carrie started asking questions, started asking what, what, like what, um, what was, and I'm trying to remember exactly what was going on with this specific person because when, when uh, we'll call her Mary, when Mary jumped in, that's what almost transformed the other student. Does right. that make sense? Claire? Absolutely, yeah. it does. Okay, yeah. so you're, you're creating a transformational traction, but somebody else happens to be going through the similar experience. 
Now, yeah. when you trigger the behavior change or you ask for the behavior change in somebody else, you actually get somebody else responding. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Now, what I do is I do that very intentionally. This is mm. called a bank shot, but you guys just had it happen. I had yeah. it happen hundreds of times when I was training groups. And I would notice that if I did something here, this other person that I sort of thought, oh God, I got to deal with this with the same thing <laughs> with this other person too. You know, yeah. and I know that this is coming. You know, like you have enough group time and all of a sudden, you know, you look at everything and you realize, geez. Over time, you start going, oh, when I'm shooting here, this person gets it. Well, what if I intentionally shoot my shot here and go after this person and this person? Because yeah. with a bank shot, you always get at least two balls are always in play. And so yeah. you shoot at one and you hit another one as well. So it's a bank shot. Anyway, That's fill me so in on, on the bank shot. That's so interesting because, so what, what happened oh, was... Oh, by the way, I'm telling you this because in your next program, start yeah. looking for bank shots intentionally. Oh, yeah. yeah. Big time. Now that you're saying that, I'm noticing, I'm thinking back to bank shots that were definitely happening throughout the, throughout the weekend. Yeah. So what happened with this, with this particular, these particular two clients is the one client was getting asked a question and he was going back into the why state of, yeah. well, but this happened to me when I was younger and this happened and this happened. And what ended up actually happening was this other client, Mary raised her hand and she said, and, and she just made a statement. She goes, but that's not who I am now. Mm -hmm. She said, I've, I have had blank experience, blank experience, like talking about some, some serious things that had happened to her in the past that I obviously can't mention, but she was talking in the past, but she wasn't living in the past. She was using the past as an, as an experience for this other client, but she was stating it to all of us. And she said, I've had this happen, this happen, this happen. And what I've learned even just from this weekend is that's not who I am. And that's not who I want to be. I, I want to be this person, I want to be a powerful woman. I want to be a woman who other people look up to. I want to be the woman that my, you know, children look up to. I, and I know that I don't, I don't want to be shy. I'm going to be powerful. I'm going to speak with purpose. And she stood up and she just said, you know, these are the things that I'm going to be and then commit to being that person. Cause I said, I'm hearing you saying, I want to be this person. I want to be this person. I want to be this person. When might you commit to being that person? And she said, well, now, and then I, the other guy's body moved forward and then he put his hand on his chin and he started really listening versus he was back in his chair and he was crying, crying and bawling. And then she said, well, now. And so then. Okay, let's, now, let's, let's I'm just trying to break. remember what happened okay. from there. Yeah. If you got to say it, say it. But if not, I'll break it down. No, break it down. Yeah, okay, please, great. Break it down. Okay, so first of all, the guy was in a Y that was similar yeah. to her Y. Yeah. Okay. So those yeah. are two obvious probabilities. I wasn't there. I can't call them facts. So they're they're highly highly probable. Yeah. Yep. So the person who was still the guy, let's just refer to him as Jim. So Jim yeah. there was stuck, and he yeah. was still staying stuck. But Carrie, it sounded like Carrie asked him a question yeah. that didn't quite break him out of his why, but yeah. it did break out Mary. Yes. And so Mary felt compelled to speak up and yep. to share what's going on with her, partially for him, but mostly for her. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, this whole transformation is some people need to experience it firsthand, and yeah. some people need to see it happen to other people so that they can mm. experience it secondhand, but firsthand, because they see them themselves in somebody else and they yeah. get that reflection and when they see themselves in somebody else they say hold it i don't want to be that person anymore i that person is holding up a mirror to me and i'm looking at it and i don't like what i see and this is going to change now right now yeah and then yeah. they start and they share contextually a past but it's yep. now a history-based what happened to them. 
Yes. And it's relevant because they make it relevant to now because now is I am changing. I am yeah. the pro- I am in that process of changing. When you recognize this, and this can either happen by watching and seeing somebody else, it can sometimes even if you're reading a business book and you read that and say, I'm done with this part of my life, I'm going to see myself a different way. But you relate not just to what that person says, but you integrate it. So the mind model of integration is required, and this is a sophisticated one. This is something that takes quite a few other mind models to be in place. By the way, mind models exist in our mind already. It's sets of behaviors that are functionally effective. They haven't been named and labeled. All I did was describe them, and I didn't invent them per se, but I discovered how we actually use these behavioral tools on an ongoing basis. But psychologists have basically thrown this stuff out as saying, oh, it's too simple, it's too obvious, it's too this, it's too that. And I go, well, it is simple, but it's not obvious. Because, well, let's put it this way. It is incredibly obvious. So obvious that most people miss the power of even simple Mm. things like the question concepts. I'm sorry I digress here briefly, but I taught the question concepts to... um, the dean of Kwantlen University College up here in Canada. And he uh, was actually one of the founders of uh, and the fathers of originally the life skills portion um, or life skills, which was a $42 million study done by the government of Canada over five years where they defined 362 of these core competencies that we need to have in our lives to be able to cope, problem solve, and be successful. At life, sk- at life Skills Colleges, we took that research and pushed forward because we found some gaps with some of the stuff because it was limited and shut down early. Um, it was only five years, but the money ran out. So anyway, we did, we continued that research on for another 10, almost, well, almost 12 years. So it was 17 years, 17 and a half years, technically, overall that I did research at the college and put everything together. Um, You know, six and a half of those years were primarily focused on question concepts. And then once I got those broken down in the first four years, I got half of the question concepts figured out. But then I started recognizing all of these other things, these, Mm -hmm. these behaviors that everybody does, but nobody has really named and labeled. And anyway, it, it goes on. And in other of my um, podcasts here, I'll be describing more of that stuff. I'm sure I'll get into it again. Good. Anyway, I hope so. <laughs> anyway, my point being here with your stuff, you've got into a transformational switch. So yeah. these triggers are, are by reflection. So it's the transformation of reflection. Now, psychology has defined this rather well and can do it quite well. But setting it up on the fly is what Mm. we did at the college to be able to make it more predictable and faster rather than having people spend years in counseling and therapy to get that. You can do it in minutes, sometimes literally seconds by Mm. reflecting critical information. You got that person to pull from their past relevant what's that they now bring into their future. And she started to spontaneously build an action plan for change. At the very least, the resulting thing she wanted from building an action plan for change, which means that her subconscious saw herself being able to achieve those things, do that action plan and transform so that there is a felt sense of transformation. Now, the really weird thing is, you haven't really talked about this, but Jim probably seeing that would then see how she's thinking because she's modeled it for him. He probably gets a similar thing happening. And to some degree, less bigger or lesser or greater throughout the rest of the group, people in the rest of the group start experiencing that shifting. They don't quite get it consciously, but they get a felt sense of it subconsciously and they go, it's possible for me yes. to change. So the probability of change goes up and up, and pretty soon you get two or three or four of these, and it starts taking off exponentially in the group. And you yeah. can transform a group by setting it up 
so that people cause those reflections to be, it's almost like a laser. And I don't know if people know how laser works, but you sh you shine a light beam in against the uh, mirror on one side and then bounce it back and forth a whole bunch of times. And once you've got a whole bunch of light beams going back and forth, you let it go on one side and you have a laser. That's how lasers, well, initially worked. Yeah. So, yeah. anyway. And you're right, and that's exactly what happened, is that you saw Jim shift, and he actually started talking about, because we went back to Jim, yep. and we said, so Jim, By the way, after, hearing, yeah, after hearing what Mary just said, who might you become? And he was, and, and he, it, was, it was almost immediate for him, too. It was really neat. And then watching others, um, you know, then there were tears in other people's yep. eyes. They were sitting up, um, clapping, and, and then one of the action plans that we have, because we have action plans every night, was take some time tonight and write down who you want to become, who, who you are now. That's what, we, that's what we called it, who you are now. And it was amazing to see them exit on Saturday. By the way, do... I gotta, you corrected yeah. yourself, who you yep. want to become to who you are now. Yeah. Future pacing is not as powerful as some people think. Future pacing is really a good idea in some scenarios, but if you want to lock in transportation, uh, trans, um, sorry, transformation, not transportation, but <laughs> transformation, you want to do it in the present self. Yeah. So who are you now? Yep. And that's, that is the powerful piece. So yeah. one of the things for, I told you guys a moment ago that this works for solopreneurs, you know, people in business, CEOs, doesn't matter. But when you start figuring out who are you now and you can start naming and labeling those changes that are occurring in you right now, big things happen. And you can apply this at a corporate level as well because you can start taking a look at it. And one of the people that was pretty darn brilliant at this was Steve Jobs. In mm. fact, I heard him, he opened... He's dead, but his words, his voice literally opened the Steve Jobs Theater. And that Steve Jobs Theater was just recently opened in 2017. And his words were there to define the future for everybody else to participate in. And it's not about the products. It's always about the person. And he knew if I don't transform people, I can't get... I can't build transformative products. Hmm. It's powerful stuff. So powerful. Yeah. So powerful. Yeah. So anyway, keep going. Sorry to interrupt, but it was a good little point. No, this is great. And the part that I love that you're doing is what I, what I love is going through examples, but then you breaking it down for people to understand that are listening and that are watching, because I think that's... Uh, it's interesting for me after going through that three day workshop with you and Melissa and then implementing it at elite marketing pros workshop in Chicago. It's it's I'm so excited and I could just spew out tons of information. I also understand that a lot of people who are watching are experiencing it for the first time. So, Absolutely. so for me, I'm so happy that you break it down well, and yeah, stop you know, me at any point in time. <laughs> no worries. Um, you know, I, I mean, we only have about seven minutes left, so I, yeah. I want to just go through this, and I want to, I, you know, Tim uh, Irway with Elite Marketing Pro, he's the founder um, with Matt and Matt Crystal, and, and he put it all together, and now Fernie's uh, also involved in it, and the three of them are doing a fabulous job, but, you know, um, a bit of a plug, but, but more of... What I want to do is I want to get minds prepared so that when people go in to the area of, of uh, becoming an entrepreneur, that they don't just have an effective mindset or a mind, because mindsets come and go, but mm -hmm. skill sets, mind models stay forever because they're identifiable, repeatable, and duplicatable. Mind models feel good in the moment. They can work well for a while. But I've worked with too many athletes that have had, and business owners, 
that have had great mindsets and they talk about you know that time when they were on and you know and athletes uh, you know college guys that that their are their game isn't great but they were in high school the guy that dove over the line and 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 got that winning touchdown mm -hmm. and they tend to relive the past rather than look forward to the future and that's mindset stuff and they try and take their mind back there to relive in the, it in the present and if you say relive it in the present excuse me but that's that can't be done you can't relive yeah. the present you can only live in the present and there's going to be things that are functionally different from where it was to where it is and you're not resourceful you're you're trying to duplicate something that you can't transform you can't move it into the present most of the time because the present especially in today's world is just changing too darn fast so mm -hmm. we have to adapt we have to be resourceful and we have to create that opportunity for change and make that change with skills attitudes and behaviors that are identifiable repeatable and duplicatable and that's how mind models were built and constructed so the person can stay resourceful yeah. The power is in resourcefulness, not in solutions. And yeah. that's the other thing that I did want to point out there is you got your people in that uh, experience there in Chicago. Really, you got them into resourceful states and yeah. you got them to be able to transform their mind from walking in to ask you, tell me the solution that I need so I can go out and make money to hold it. I'll give you, I'll one up that. I'll yeah. give you a way to think so you're resourceful so you can know, you can test your own examples and see what's working, what's probably working, what's not working because we'll give you the way to manage that through mind models. Yep. And that's what you guys did. Awesome yeah, job. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, and thank, both, thank you to both you and Melissa because I know, and thank you to Tim because Tim's a <laughs> very, very intelligent man. Oh for, yeah, he's a smart guy. Yep, and for helping us be able to have, I mean, for, for giving, basically giving this to us, for us to be able to have that because, um, man, the amount of lives that can be impacted now is just, it's, it's infinite, which is, which I love. I Absolutely. really do. Absolutely. And that's yeah. really what we're here to do. So, you know, just a little bit more with um, mindmodelmasterysecrets.com. And I just got to wrap this up because we only have uh, two minutes left or so. Um, anyway, Carrie, thank you once again. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. I hope this was useful for you. Yes. Oh my gosh. Absolutely. It was for me just being able to share with you what we did and then breaking it down even further. And I love the part of now noticing even what I might do at the next workshop is absolutely. just like super powerful. Absolutely. Well, and, and there's so much more for you to get like so much <laughs> no. more. I mean, it, it's just, uh, it's not endless, but there's a lot, a lot of stuff here that we can, we can leverage and, and do more. So no, it was wonderful having you on the show. And I, I am so darn proud of you guys, like all three of you. I mean, you're on the show, but you, um, uh, Carrie and um, JT, yeah. and I mean the three of you, and I, I can just love when you were describing Tim sitting there in the back, you know, smiling away, beaming away. I can just sort of see him doing a, a little Tim happy dance in his head, yeah. you know, like just having a great time, you know, yeah. uh, enjoying seeing everybody else succeed. So I'm thrilled to hear about it. Absolutely thrilled, and great to have you on the show. Um, and just uh, for those listeners out there, you know, you can come on board, um, you can subscribe and follow. Uh, I'm, you know, please tell people, share this, and we'll have the links below for you to be able to subscribe so that you can get notifications of when we're up next and one more of these amazing little uh, mind model episodes comes out. So mindmodelmasterysecrets.com and uh, there'll be a link to also rewiringthemind.com and that'll be up shortly if it's not already up and um, and that way you can explore other options if you're really into diving deep into the area of mind models. Anyway, thank you, Carrie. Thanks so much for coming out. Great having you. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, thank you so much, Blair, for having me. I'm super honored to be here. And make sure you give Melissa a hug as well. <laughs> I will. I certainly will. Thank you so much. Right. Have a great yep. day. Bye for now. All right. Take care. Hey, thanks for listening. Please remember to subscribe and leave us feedback. Do you have a question you want answered live on the show? 
If so, go to mindmodelmasterysecrets.com to submit your question. 